Hello, I'm Jan Marini, the founder of Jan Marini Skin Research, and I am here with Pam. And Pam actually works at Plantronics in Santa Cruz, and she's in the marketing department. Yep. And we're going to be doing her consultations. So, Pam, if there was something you could change or improve about your skin, what would it be? Um, the texture. My skin, um, blackheads, acne. Okay. Um, and the overall redness. But most of all, texture is my biggest concern. Okay. And so when you say texture, you also mean pore size? Yes. Okay. Anything else you want to change or improve? Um, I guess the dryness also. Okay. Yeah, it's a little dry in some areas, just making it look more dewy and radiant. Okay. Nice. So, what type of skin do you think you have? How would you categorize? Do you think you're normal, combo, dry? How do you I'm, I'm combo. Okay, where, so if you're combo, where do you think you're oily? Uh, my T-zone. Okay, for sure. And meaning, is that the forehead and down the center? Yes. Okay. And where do you think, you mentioned some dryness, where do you think you're dry? Um, under, like the cheek area. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah. what happens that makes you think that area is dry? Um, when I apply makeup, um, it just seems more patchier mm -hmm. over there. It doesn't mm -hmm. go on as smooth. I have mm -hmm. to put more moisturizer or some type mm -hmm. of oil to make it look smooth like the rest of my mm -hmm. face when I have makeup on. Um, and does that ever get oily in that area? No. No. I think the oil is more concentrated in the center of my face. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been a smoker? No. And how about a sunbather? Yes. Okay. And when you were a teenager, what age range? Um, I started when I was maybe 14, and okay. I still do it now. Okay. Yeah, I just did it last weekend. Okay. So tell me, what do you what do you wash with in the morning? Just water. Okay, and then what do you do after water? Anything? Um, I'll put on a moisturizer. Okay, and, and do you remember what brand it is? Tatcha. Can you spell that for me? T-A-T-C-H-A. T-A-C. T-A-T-C-H-A. Okay, gotcha. Tatcha. Okay. And is that a lotion or is it a cream? It's a, it's kind of a gel consistency. Okay. And so tell me now in the morning before I go any further. So you say you wash your face with water. Is there a reason why you don't use a cleanser in the morning? Um, I feel like my cleanser is just going to make my skin drier in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm getting ready for work, I don't want my skin to be more dry than it already is. Um, so I just rinse with water and I'll put on a moisturizer okay. and then I put on my makeup. And then what do you do after the moisturizer? Anything? No. Makeup? Mm hmm Okay, and is that a foundation? Is it powder? Yeah, a foundation. It's a okay. liquid foundation. And who makes that? Kevin Aquan. Okay. And uh, is there any sunscreen in there? I don't think there's sunscreen in that. Okay. Um, and so, After, you're not, so you're not wearing a sunscreen? I mean, there's this powder sunscreen that mm -hmm. my esthetician gave me that I just put a little bit on. Um, I mm -hmm. think it's 30 okay. SPF. Okay. So I always say this, but I always tell people when they say that their foundation or their sunscreen is in their foundation or their powder makeup, I always say, okay, so you put a real thick coat all over your whole face mm -hmm. and on your lips and on your ears, and on your neck and your chest, and of course you don't, so enough said. <laughs> okay. No, it's just a so, quick brush. What do you wash with at night? Um, it's a cleanser from Hydro Cup Type. That's the brand. And is that cleanser, um, is it a gel, is it a cream, is it? It's a cream. Okay. Yeah, it, it sets up. So it's a cream that sets. Is it made for a particular skin type? Um, acne prone. Okay. Is there anything in there that you would recognize, like they have salicylic in there or something? It has like salicylic that? acid, metallic acid, and tea tree oil. Oh, metallic? Metallic, okay. yeah. Right. 
<laughs> writing as fast as I can. Um, and then what do you put on after that? Anything? Um, there is a oil that I put on. The brand is Youth to the People. It's a all-natural, I think it's like an acai goji berry oil. Um, just helps with my dryness. And then I put on a night cream. Okay. And the night cream, is it the same one you use? It's a that? Uh, Dr. Spiller. Dr. Spiller, S-P-I-L-L-E-R. Okay. And um, is it for any particular skin type? Um, for acne front skin. Okay. Anything in there that you can think of? No. It's called the Night Propolis Cream. Okay. Propolis is right. Do you do anything on an occasion basis? Do you ever do any kind of scrubs or masks or anything like that? Yeah. So I every other day I do a jojoba peel. Um, it's... It's called the Hoba Peeling Cream. It's from Dr. Spiller, too. It's a very um, small exfoliant type of cream. So I just stab it on, exfoliate, and um, it helps a little with the texture. So you put it on, and then is it a rub off cream? Or yeah, there's like little tiny, tiny beads in okay. it, or I don't know if it's necessarily beads. I think it's something else, but there's it's like a, it's a little rough, and so it, okay. you know, I, I okay, rub so it. Okay, so it's like a scrub. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the acne, and I and and, and let me ask you a couple of other questions. Um, first of all, when did you? How old were you when you started getting acne? I'd say around twelve years old. Okay. Did you have anything at all before then? Like, for example, if you looked really close in the mirror and you went like this, you saw any bumps under your skin, if anything, or is it just basically... No. Like, yeah, it was definitely acne at that point. It was just, you know, it was this. And did you, um, do you think your acne is worse or better at this point? A lot better. Okay. But not where I'd like it to be. And how would you describe your breakouts? Do you get... Papules, which are red bumps that turn into pustules. Do you mm -hmm. ever get nodules or mini cysts, those hard underground ones? Do you ever get actual cysts? I get, um, I guess you could say cysts at very minimal. If mm -hmm. I get them, I'll get them on my chin. So occasional on your chin. Very, sure. very occasional, yeah. Um, I haven't gotten any pimples where there's actually a white head in a while. Mm -hmm. They're more just um, red. Red papules. Bumps. Yeah. Okay, what do you do that you think sometimes makes it better, and what do you do that you think makes it worse? I think my skincare routine right now is okay, mm -hmm. and it hasn't caused it to get necessarily any worse, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not making it any better. Um, I try to take care of my skin as most as I can. I switch out my pillowcases every couple of, every couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I always make sure to never touch my face. I always keep my hands clean if I do touch my face because I'm so paranoid mm -hmm. about it. Um, I try to use really good products. Um, I think one thing that hurts my skin, it's definitely not wearing sunscreen and not taking mm -hmm. care of it mm -hmm. in that way. Um, I think my diet is pretty good for my skin. I've cut out some things that I have been told that um, don't benefit my skin. So what do you think doesn't benefit your skin? Cow milk. It's been okay. a mm -hmm. couple of years since I mm -hmm. drink cow milk. If I do, it's mm -hmm. very, very rare. And that's absolutely true because there is a study that's been printed in the American Academy of Dermatology. It was done on 47,000 nurses. It is absolutely conclusive that milk does cause acne. That's dairy products. Keep in mind that's yogurt. That's anything that's in the dairy product. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with the hormones we give cows. It's the fact that in the U.S., and it doesn't matter whether you buy your milk at Whole Foods or it's organic mm -hmm. or whatever, we keep cows pregnant, we continue to milk them. Yeah. And so when they're pregnant, they start producing hormones. And so there's, if you take milk off the shelf and have it tested, you'll see that it's full of steroidal hormones. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Anything else that you feel the diet that is beneficial or is harmful that you eliminate from your diet? Um, I do try to get facials at least once every couple mm -hmm. months. But what about food diet? Oh, food? Uh -huh. um, I've given up cow milk. I haven't given yeah. up okay. cheese, uh -huh. yogurt. I haven't been able to do that yet. Um, 
other than that, I mean, I eat pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. I eat, rarely do I ever get fast food, processed food. Mm -hmm. I try to eat clean okay. all the time. Okay, good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, the acne. And I kind of want to start before I get into some specifics, I'm going to talk a little bit about the acne process. I want to talk a little bit about what you perceive as dryness and also why the sun is, um, is harmful for acne. So when we touch the outside of our skin, what we're doing is we're touching the stratum corneum, it's a dead layer. That's a layer that we obsess over in the mirror all the time, but it's actually dead. And we shed about 500 million cells a day, but we're not aware of it, they're microscopic. And so what happens when we don't remove that surface through cleansing, and also depending on the cells coming out of, out of your follicle, they sit there on the surface, and over time they harden and they cornify. Mm -hmm. Now you could have very oily skin, or you could have combination skin, but what happens is that dead cell layer will absorb the oil, and also when it cornifies and hardens, it feels very tight and dry, mm -hmm. but you don't have dry skin. So what happens is we slather moisturizers on, mm -hmm. and very often those moisturizers and the products that we put on can actually have a detrimental effect or a causative effect for acne. So it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Now, when we talk about um, the acne process, and I'm going to kind of draw a picture in your mind, because I think it's really helpful if you can visualize what's going on, then it makes sense as to how we address acne. So, as I said, you've got this dead layer on the outside of your skin, and it's constantly shedding. Now, when you look in the mirror and you see a follicle opening, that is actually the opening into a long hollow tube, or pore if you want to call it a pore, that's about as big around as the diameter of a hair. And, you know, when you think about your pores, you think about, oh, there must be some big cavern in there because if I get a sit and I squeeze it, there's all this stuff that comes out. But it's very, it's a very tiny little long hollow tube. At the bottom of the tube is the spacious glands that produce the oil. Now that tube is lined with dead cells, just like the cells on the outside of your skin. Mm -hmm. They sit there, they fall off, and oil pushes them to the surface. So that's one of the reasons why we produce oil at all. It's not going to keep you any younger. And then those cells fall off. That's a normal process. Now, in, for whatever reason, we don't know if there's a hereditary factor, although we think there is. We haven't found the gene. But generally, it runs in families. I heard you mentioned earlier before we went on camera that your brother mm -hmm. had had acne. Yeah. So yeah. you can be the only person in your family that has it, because it could skip a generation. But you could also be the only person that doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, we don't want know why exactly, but in individuals with a tendency to acne, the cells in the follicle stick together, they clump together. Now the beginning of that is what's called a microcomido. And a microcomido is a tiny clump of dead cells, you need a microscope to see it, and it's sitting there in the follicle, and it can sit there for days, weeks, or months, and you could have perfect skin. Mm -hmm. and it could take that long for it to actually develop into something that you would see on the outside of your face, or it could be dormant and not develop at all. And at the average age at which women develop hips in the U.S. is eight years old. Mm -hmm. The onset of puberty is not menstruation, it's breast development. So oftentimes these microcomedones are starting in girls that are eight or nine or ten years old. Mm -hmm. You may not see it in your case until you were 12. Yeah. And so acne can actually progress in a number of different directions. And the term acne is a term that describes the process. If you have one lesion, if you break out once a year, it's an acne lesion. It doesn't mean that you have it all the time. It's also known as retention hyperkeratosis. So what happens is, is when these dead cells stick together in the follicle, it can progress in a, in a couple of different ways. So one would be where the follicle collects cells, collects cells, collects cells. It dilates, and you see that as an open comedone, mm -hmm. a clog pore, a blackhead, mm -hmm. all, all those different names. Yeah. But if you don't see that pore opening, if it's kind of closed off, inside the follicle, those cells are collecting. And P. acne bacteria, which is harmless, we all have it, I have it on my skin. You, you can have P. acne bacteria, huge colonies, and not be breaking out, but in the follicle, where the bacteria gets trapped in with the cells, and there's oil that gets trapped, the bacteria eats the oil. And what it does is it excretes a fatty acid byproduct. Now that fatty acid byproduct is very, very corrosive. And if everything stayed in your follicle, you'd never break out. But if the follicle has a leak, a rupture, or a blowout, and eventually that corrosive material causes one of those to happen, mm -hmm. then you see a lesion. 
Now, if you have a leak, you're going to get a red bump or a papule. Mm -hmm. If you have a rupture in the follicle, you're going to have a deeper lesion. It's going to be like a mini cyst, those hard underground lesions, or it's going to be like a larger cyst. If you have a blowout, then literally it looks like the whole side of the follicle blew up and you're going to have a big cyst. Mm -hmm. And the big cysts virtually always scar because they have affected the dermis where there's collagen. And so as it makes its way to the surface, it destroys tissue mm -hmm. and you end up with a scar. Now when you get a discoloration like leftover red discoloration, some, in some skin types it can be like purplish, brownish looking, that's not a scar, that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory redness. And we can get rid of that. It just takes time, and it seems like it just it takes forever yeah. for it to go away. Okay, so here's what you have to do if you're going to address acne. Number one, you have to get something in the follicle that addresses those cells sticking together. We've got to keep the cells from sticking together. If they don't stick together, guess what? Mm -hmm. You've interrupted the acne process. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have to introduce something in the follicle that actually goes after the P. acne bacteria. Now, unfortunately, you can't kill P. acne bacteria permanently. So it's called bacteria static as opposed to bactericidal. So in other words, if we can keep those colonies down to where they're pretty much non-existent every single day, they're not eating the oil and not excreting the fatty acid byproduct. Mm -hmm. The follicle doesn't rupture. Right. And the other thing is that we also want to employ agents that help to do everything we can to kind of keep that follicle clear and also to sort of prevent the process. Mm -hmm. So those, those are sort of the things we want to address. And the other thing that I want to mention to you when we're kind of talking about this is the sun is kind of paradoxical in a way. One of the reasons why people sunbathe, obviously because they get tan, but also because it seems to you that your acne gets better. And the reason is, is because what the sun does is it causes the stratum corneum to harden further. That dead layer dries it out. Now when it dries it out and it hardens, it suppresses all of the material and it usually comes to the surface. So you think, okay, I'm not breaking out as much. When people lay out during the summer, and then particularly like teenagers, they go back to school in the fall, and all of a sudden their acne is worse, and thinking, well, that's because I'm not laying out. Mm -hmm. It's because the stratum corneum softens, and everything that was being suppressed comes to the surface. Yeah. So you actually make acne worse. And also, acne is an inflammatory disorder, and UV radiation is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So you're right, the sunscreen is important for a lot of reasons, because most of the damage you're going to see in your lifetime happen before the age of 10, at least 50% before the age of 20, and you want to prevent that. But also, it's, it's really critical in situations where you have acne and things like that. Okay, so here's what we're going to um, recommend for you. One thing I forgot to mention is when yes. I do lay out, uh -huh. um, I always cover my face. I always have a hat Thank. on, sunglasses. I'm okay. like the weird person that I, yeah. I get a shirt and cover my face. Thank but you. I'm it, so glad. It helps, but I I mean I still get very mm -hmm. red because of the heat. But oh, uh -huh. I don't I don't like having my face in the sun. I cover it completely when I'm out. So this is such good news because she's gonna have a really young looking face and a very old looking body. That's, <laughs> yeah. what that, that's what I realized. I'm like, well, I don't cover my face or I don't cover my body, but at least I'll have a nice face. <laughs> no, but I'm glad to hear that you that you do cover your face. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, oh, you know, before I get into the product recommendations, um, one other thing that I want to mention about food, we do know that milk causes acne, and again, even the yogurt and the cheese, and you're saying it's really hard to give that up, mm -hmm. um, it, can de a very, it can be, for some people, it can be a major causative factor. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, something that is really starting to come to the forefront, it has to do with the glycemic load, which is a little different than the glycemic index. So glycemic index is really obvious. If you pick up a Snicker bar, you, you, it's going to have a high glycemic index. That, you know, it doesn't take rocket science to figure that one out. But if you, the glycemic load has to do with how is that food processed and what does it do to your insulin levels yeah. when you're eating it. So, for example, you could have a piece of whole wheat bread that's the best whole wheat bread in the world and you could have a quarter cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. And you think, which one is worse as far as the glycemic load? It's the bread. Yeah. It'll make your insulin mm -hmm. blow up higher. So what happens is when your insulin levels are not stable, 
And when they're going up and they're kind of erratic, and particularly over time, as you get older and the insulin levels can even get a little bit higher, you know what your body does to take them back down to normal? Produces testosterone. Mm okay. Acne. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why you want to keep your insulin levels really, really stable. You know, lean meats, fish, leafy greens, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here's what I'm going to recommend for you. Um, I'm going to recommend, number one, our bioglycolic facial cleanser. Now, the bioglycolic facial cleanser is a cleanser that is 12% uh, glycolic acid. It's actually a very, very gentle cleanser. I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a cleanser, a lot of you have, called Cetaphil. Yes. You can get it in, okay. Doctors recommend it a lot because it's so neutral, so gentle. Well, the base of this cleanser is very similar to Cetaphil. Okay. So, regardless of how sensitive your skin is, it typically works well for everyone. And, but it's 12% glycolic acid, and glycolic acid has the ability, because of its small molecular weight, it's the smallest of all the alpha hydroxy acids, to get into the follicle, it dissolves and dislodges the blue-like substance or cellular cement. It does it on the outside of the skin as well, so the skin looks so much smoother, and the follicles look so much smaller. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be number one. Number two, I'm going to have you um, using something called BioClear Lotion. BioClear Lotion is uh, a combination of glycolic, salicylic, and azelaic acid. And it is another, it's a Levon product, again, that has the ability to get into the follicle. And in terms of being able to help with sort of that, that beginning of that acne process, the appearance of acne, some of the factors, I have never seen anything that works as well in terms of making the skin look more resurfaced, making the pores look smaller, mm -hmm. All those kinds of things you're talking about, you want a really nice, glowy skin. Yeah. Because when you, it, it, it gets rid of that dead layer, and when you get rid of that dead layer, you, that's when your skin sort of starts to take on a sheen, because it's not that dry layer mm -hmm. that is sort of, again, holding on to oil and holding on to dead cells. Mm -hmm. So we really don't know for certain, your skin could be oilier than you think it is. Mm -hmm. Because many times when individuals clear up their skin and they resurface their skin, which is a term that I like to use, resurfacing, um, with that dead, dry layer gone, their skin just looks so much more smooth mm -hmm. and so much more reflective. And what they're actually seeing and that kind of doing this is they're actually seeing that the oil is not trapped. Okay, the third thing. Um, we're going to have you using something called Duality. Duality is a really unique product, and literally there's nothing like it. It's a dual chamber product, so on one side it has retinol. Now, you mentioned to me that you're using retin on an occasional basis. Typically what you're doing is you're putting on an after you break out. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want everybody to remember is that once you have a breakout on the outside of your skin, it's the end of the process. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is hopefully we want to prevent those breakouts from happening, period. Okay, so your skin is always clear. Um, this is a very different type of retinol. And in the other chamber is benzoyl peroxide. Now, most people when they hear benzoyl peroxide, they think, oh, teenage medication, and it's going to dry my skin, it's going to make it flaky, it's going to make it red, on and on and on. This is a very different type of benzoyl peroxide. Um, first of all, all benzoyl peroxide, regardless of whether you get it by prescription or you get it over the counter, it is micronized. But this is micronized further than any other. Instead of being 60 microns, it's 5 microns. It surpasses, it, it passes the surface of the skin or bypasses, I should say, and it penetrates very quickly, and it is not drying. It was tested by Dr. Jaggi Rao in um, Alberta, Canada. Dr. Jaggi Rao is a board-certified derm, derm in Canada and in the U.S., and he's the head of the Dermatology Residency Program at the University of Alberta, and he's also the CEO and founder of the Acne Clinics of Canada, and he treats more acne than virtually anybody in Canada. The skin of these patients in 120 degrees below zero weather is more hydrated after treatment with benzoyl peroxide than before. Okay. The nice thing about this product is it doesn't just address the acne, but your skin looks so much more refined and so much healthier. 
And people who are older and that have acne, because it's an epidemic today in women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and beyond, it also goes after the appearance of fine lines, textural changes, the pores, it just makes the skin look a lot more youthful while you're still able to treat your acne. So we're going to have you using that. And then, um, I'm going to have you using um, our Transformation Serum, which is a really power-packed, very, very light moisturizer. And finally, our SPF 30 antioxidants, 30, actually 33. Act SPF 33 antioxidant daily face protectant. Now, this is the face protectant is one of my favorite products in the world because it has an unlimited capacity to absorb oil, but it cannot absorb actives and it cannot absorb water. So, if you have combination yeah. skin, you feel really balanced and you're like, oh, I glow. If yeah. you have dry skin, you say, oh my gosh, I'm really balanced and I feel so nice and soft and silky. So, it won't make me more oily. Right. Right. Okay. Now, we're in the summertime, so what we may need to do is we may need to, to kind of modify your program. We're just going to have to see how your skin, because as you go through this, you may, like I said, you may find you're a little bit more oily than you think you are. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some things, once we get you sort of balanced, so to speak, there's some things that we're going to do to further resurface the skin and to further work on pore size and all those things that she wants to have that red carpet skin, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, it's, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work with you. This is, this is so important that when you are addressing skin concerns, so much in the marketplace is generalized. It's non-specific and you need to think of what is it I want to change or improve and really target products that are able to address those skin concerns and have some validity behind them. And, and then your practitioner should be checking back with you in just a matter of days. So we're going to have somebody's going to check back with you in four days. And then I'm going to check back with you in a couple of weeks. Okay. And if we need to modify the program, we can. If we, you know, need to change something, add something. And also over time, weather changes. It's going to be different in the wintertime than in the summertime. Lifestyle yeah. changes. Um, so... We're going to continue to work on that. And I always say that if you tell me a month or two months from now that your skin is the best it's ever been, I can get it even better. <laughs> That's really encouraging. <laughs> so, so are you excited? I'm very excited. Well, I'm yeah, excited to see what happens. Can... Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we're going to be able to bring you back and then we can have this success, success, success story. Yes. And you can tell everybody about how your skin turned out. Yep. So, thank you so much for tuning in, and please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.